Welcome back, Deep Divers. Today, we're going way back in time, uh, almost 1,800 years, no. to look at something called the Frankfurt Silver Inscription. It's the oldest Christian inscription found north of the Alps. And, you know, I think this is going to be a really interesting deep dive into this. Yeah. It gives us a really unique look into what early Christianity was like, especially because, you know, this was before Christianity became, like, the huge force it was later on. Right. Okay, so try to picture this. It's 2018, an excavation is happening in Frankfurt, Germany, and they find this fragile little silver amulet, right, among the remains of a man, lived sometime between like 230 and 270 AD. So what's the big deal? Well, during this time period, Christianity wasn't widespread or accepted at all, really. So the fact that this inscription is there suggests that he was already a pretty devout Christian. And, you know, back then it was actually dangerous to be Christian openly. So it really changes what we thought we knew about how Christianity spread, you know, in these early days. Right. And the inscription itself is pretty special too, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. First of all, it's written completely in Latin, which isn't something you see very often in amulets from this time period. You know, usually amulets from back then had all sorts of stuff mixed in from different religions. Like they have bits of Judaism, maybe some pagan stuff, even some early Christian elements, um, syncretism, they call it. But this one, it's all Christian. No other gods or beliefs mentioned. So it's like he was making a statement. Yeah. With this inscription. It's possible. I mean, especially when you think about how risky it was to be Christian out in the open back then. Maybe it was his way of holding on to his faith. You know, even after death. We must have been so hard to even read the inscription. I read that the silver was incredibly fragile after being in the ground that long. Oh, it was. It had gotten so brittle that if they tried to unroll it, it would have just crumbled. So they had to come up with a different solution. And what they did was actually really cool. They used a CT scanner and created a 3D model of the whole amulet. And then they were able to digitally unroll the foil on the computer. So it was like digitally peeling back time to see what was written underneath. Yeah, exactly. And there were 18 lines of Latin text. They talk about Jesus Christ, call him the son of God, even mention St. Titus, who was a big deal in early Christianity. And there's this part that talks about surrendering to God's will, which is, you know, a really important idea in Christianity. And to find something like this north of the Alps, it just adds another layer to the whole story of early Christian communities. Totally. Finding it in Frankfurt suggests that these communities had already spread further north than we thought. It could actually rewrite the timeline of how Christianity first came to Northern Europe. It makes me wonder about this Frankfurt man himself. Who was he? What was his life like? Well, we don't know his name, of course, but we can pick up some clues from the things that were buried with him. For example, there was an incense bowl and a clay jug, which could mean he was involved in religious practices. And the way the amulet was positioned right under his chin suggests he probably wore it around his neck on a cord. Maybe for protection. Yeah. You know, in this life and the next. Yeah, that makes sense. Amulets were like good luck charms back in Roman times. So for the Frankfurt man, this amulet probably had both a spiritual meaning and a practical purpose. It's just amazing to think about the power of faith, especially back then when Christianity was so new and often faced resistance. Absolutely. The inscription gives us this real tangible connection to the faith of one individual living in a world that was going through huge social and religious changes. Right. And speaking of religious change, the inscription's completely Christian. But earlier you mentioned that a lot of amulets from this period were like a blend of different faiths. Exactly. That's what's so interesting about this particular inscription. It suggests that there were some communities that's moving towards a much clearer and maybe even exclusive form of Christianity. It kind of challenges that idea that early Christianity was always this mix and match kind of religion. Right. So instead of having a little bit of everything, some groups were starting to form their own unique Christian identity. It seems that way. And this inscription, with its focus on only Christian beliefs, might be one of the earliest examples of that. So what could this tell us about the community the Frankfurt man was a part of? Well, it could be that his community had a stricter interpretation of Christianity. Maybe they were influenced by a specific teacher or a particular branch of the faith. It's also possible that the inscription just reflects the Frankfurt man's own personal beliefs. You know, maybe he was deeply devout and just not interested in mixing his faith with other traditions. So either way, it tells us that early Christianity wasn't just one big thing. There were likely all sorts of different beliefs and practices depending on the community. Absolutely. And the Frankfurt Silver Inscription is like a window into that diversity. Oh, one more thing about the inscription. The language. 
Why Latin? Greek was more common for religious things back then, wasn't right. it? Yeah, it's a good question. There are a few theories about that. One idea is that it reflects how Latin was becoming more important in the Roman Empire, like in government and law, even in places where people didn't usually speak Latin. So for some early Christians, using Latin might have been a way to connect with the larger Roman world. So they were engaging with Roman culture even though they had their own distinct faith. Exactly. But it could also be something much simpler. Maybe the person who made the inscription just knew Latin better than Greek. We have to be careful about reading too much into a single artifact. True. But it does make you think about how language, identity, and the spread of ideas all came together back in Roman times. It really does. And that's one of the things that makes this discovery so fascinating. It forces us to re-examine our assumptions about early Christianity and how it fit into the Roman Empire. So we have this amazing inscription that changes how we think about the timeline and the very nature of early Christianity. But what about the man himself? What can we really say about his life, his beliefs, his place in the world? That's the question, isn't it? But it's tough to answer with any certainty. We're working with limited information here. We have the inscription, the amulet itself, a few things buried with him, and the context of the burial site. It's like trying to put together a puzzle with only a few pieces. But even those few pieces can give us glimpses into his world. We know he lived in this Roman city called Nida, which is where Frankfurt is today, sometime between 230 and 270 AD, and it seems likely he was part of one of the first Christian communities in that region. And judging from the amulet and inscription, his faith was clearly important to him. Yeah, it wasn't just something private for him. He wore his beliefs for everyone to see. Literally. You're right. It was a public declaration. And that's a big deal considering how dangerous it could be back then. It speaks to his strong conviction, his willingness to be different, maybe even to risk persecution for what he believed in. Makes you wonder about the conversations he had. The challenges he faced, the hopes he had, the fears. What was it like to be a Christian in that time and place? How did his faith shape his everyday life? Those are great questions. And unfortunately, we may never know the answers for sure. History often overlooks the lives of everyday people, especially those who are part of minority groups. But that doesn't mean we can't think about it, can't use our imagination to try and understand the human side of this artifact. Because history is ultimately about people, isn't it? The choices they made, the lives they lived, the things they left behind. And the Frankfurt man, even though we don't know his name, he's changed how we understand the past. His faith, his story, his little silver amulet. They've opened a window into a world we're only beginning to understand. It's a reminder that every life matters. That every life has the potential to make a difference. And to me, it shows how powerful human curiosity is. This drive we have to uncover the secrets of the past and to put those pieces of history back together one discovery at a time. And sometimes, all it takes is a small silver amulet hidden away for centuries to completely change how we see ourselves and where we come from. So we've been focusing on the Frankfurt man as a person, but this discovery, it goes way beyond just one guy. How has the Frankfurt Silver inscription changed archaeology? And what does it mean for how we understand early Christianity in general? It's been huge. Like we were talking about earlier, this inscription pushes back the timeline of when we think Christians were in Northern Europe. Before they found this, historians thought it took a lot longer for Christianity to reach that area. But the Frankfurt man proves them wrong. So this could be a turning point in how we see the spread of early Christianity, right? It could be, yeah. This discovery has sparked a ton of new research. Now, archaeologists are looking at sites all over Europe with a fresh perspective, trying to see if they missed any early Christian stuff in places they didn't expect. It's like throwing a pebble in a pond and watching the ripples spread out. Exactly. And it's not just about geography. The Frankfurt Silver inscription is also making us rethink what early Christianity was all about. We keep coming back to the fact that the inscription is purely Christian. Can you explain why that's such a big deal? Sure. So back then, the Roman Empire was a mix of all kinds of religions. You had paganism, Judaism, all these mystery cults. It was very common for people to combine different beliefs mm -hmm. to create this kind of mixed bag approach to religion. So the fact that the Frankfurt man was so focused on Christianity really makes him stand out. It does. And it raises questions about how early Christians were forming their own identity. Was his community part of a larger movement, a movement toward a more defined, exclusive type of Christianity? Or was it just him? Maybe it was just his personal belief or something specific to his little community. I guess that's where more research comes in to see if there are any patterns, any connections with other findings. 
Exactly. The Frankfurt Silver inscription, it's like a starting point. It's pushing us to dig deeper, to question what we thought we knew, and to come up with new ways of looking at the evidence. Speaking of evidence, what are the experts saying about all of this? The response has been really positive. Some people are calling it a scientific sensation, a once-in-a-lifetime find. It's creating a lot of buzz and discussion among all sorts of experts, archaeologists, theologians, historians, even linguists. Sounds like this little amulet has everyone in academia talking. Oh, yeah. I think it speaks to our fascination with the past, you know, with solving mysteries and with understanding where we came from. And it's not just the academics who are excited about this. The public seems pretty interested too, right? Totally. The story of the Frankfurt man, his faith, this inscription that was hidden for all those years, it's touched people all over the world. I think it speaks to something universal about being human, our need for meaning and connection and the power of belief. It's amazing to think that one guy from so long ago, a guy we don't even know the name of, could still have an impact on us today. It's proof that history is all connected, that the past is still shaping the present. So we've talked about the bigger historical picture, the buzz in the academic world, even how interested the public is. But I keep coming back to the Frankfurt man himself. I know we can't know for sure, but what kind of person do you think he was? It's fun to speculate. To try and fill in the blanks, you know. From what we do know, I picture him as a man of deep faith. Someone who held onto his beliefs even when it was hard. Maybe he was a leader in his community. Someone who shared his faith with others and helped build a Christian identity in a world that was still mostly pagan. It's incredible to think that his actions just by wearing that amulet could have played a part in Christianity growing in that region. It's possible. We often think that history is made by big events and powerful people, but the Frankfurt Man shows us that even everyday people can change the course of history. It's a humbling thought, right? We all have the power to make a difference in the world, even if we don't know it at the time. Absolutely. The Frankfurt Man's legacy, it may not have been intentional, but it's a powerful example of how much individual belief and action can matter. And it highlights how important archaeological discoveries are. Without that tiny amulet, no one would ever know about the Frankfurt Man. His story would be lost forever. That's true. Archaeology lets us touch the past. It gives us a way to put the pieces of history back together and to find the stories of those who came before us. It's like a portal to another world. It lets us see the past in a new way and to appreciate how complex human experience has always been across time and different cultures. Exactly. The Frankfurt Silver Inscription, it's a reminder that the past isn't just one big unchanging story. It's made up of the lives, beliefs, and actions of so many individuals. And as we uncover more of these hidden pieces, we get a richer, more detailed understanding of our place in the whole human story. So what's next for the Frankfurt Silver Inscription? Yeah. What are the next steps in this investigation? The research is still going strong. Experts are going over the inscription itself really carefully, deciphering the language, looking at the theological implications. It's like a detective story. Every clue leads to new questions. I like that analogy. And of course, archaeologists are still digging around the burial site. They're hoping to find more evidence of the Frankfurt Man's community. Who knows? Maybe there are other artifacts out there, other inscriptions, other stories just waiting to be discovered. It's exciting to think about what they might find how each new piece of evidence could shed more light on this period of early Christian history. Absolutely. And as we put these pieces of the past together, we'll continue to learn more about how Christianity spread, how it changed as it encountered different cultures, and how it eventually became the main religion of the Western world. Speaking of the Western world, I think it's time we broadened our perspective a bit to think about what this discovery means for our understanding of religious history and how faith itself has evolved. You're right. While the Frankfurt Silver Inscription is about early Christianity, it offers insights into how religions change and how they spread insights that apply to all kinds of faith traditions. For example, it shows how much individuals can influence religious history. We tend to think of religion as something big and organized, led by powerful people and set doctrines. But the Frankfurt man, through his personal beliefs and actions, he left a mark that's still felt today. It's a reminder that history isn't just about empires and emperors. It's also about all the choices, actions, and beliefs of individuals all added together. And it speaks to the power of personal conviction. Back then, it was probably easier to just go along with everyone else, but the Frankfurt man chose to be different. He literally wore his faith for everyone to see. 
His actions show that he was deeply committed to his beliefs, maybe even a little defiant. And that kind of individual conviction has always been a driving force behind how religions change and how new ideas emerge. Think about the first people who followed Jesus, the Protestant reformers, or even all the people throughout history who've embraced new spiritual paths. They all challenged what everyone else believed and found new ways of understanding God. You're exactly right. The Frankfurt Silver Inscription is a reminder that religious history isn't just a straight line, one big story. It's complex, and it has many sides. It's a story shaped by countless individuals and communities, each with their own unique point of view and experiences. And it shows us why studying the past is so important. It's not just about knowing what happened. It's about understanding ourselves, our place in the world, and those basic human qualities that connect us across time and different cultures. Couldn't have said it better myself. The Frankfurt Silver Inscription, it's more than just an old object. It's a window into the past that can shed light on our present and maybe even help us understand the future of faith in a world that's constantly changing. And on that note, I think we need to take a little break to let all of this sink in. When we come back, we'll explore the more personal and spiritual side of this discovery. We'll look at what the Frankfurt Silver Inscription tells us about the power of faith and how the past can still speak to us after all these centuries. Welcome back, Deep Divers. We've talked about a lot, you know, the historical impact of the Frankfurt Silver Inscription, the cultural ripples. But now I want to shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about the emotional side of this discovery. Yeah, that's an important aspect. You know, beyond the facts and analysis, this inscription really makes you think about the human spirit, our never-ending search for meaning, you know? It's true. When I picture the Frankfurt man, his life, his beliefs, his choice to have that amulet buried with him, I feel a sense of awe. It's incredible. This man lived in a world so different from ours, but his story really touches something deep inside us. It speaks to the power of faith, right? Imagine him, living in a time when Christianity was just starting out. Maybe he even faced opposition, persecution, and yet his faith never wavered. It's a testament to his commitment. It also makes me think about how much we all have in common, even though we're separated by so much time. Hmm. The Frankfurt man in us, we share this search for something bigger than ourselves, for meaning and purpose beyond our everyday lives. Exactly. That yearning for connection, for something that gives our lives significance. It's a part of being human. And the Frankfurt Silver Inscription, it gives us a real tangible connection to that shared experience, reaching back almost 2,000 years. It's amazing how a small object like that can bridge the gap between then and now connecting us to the past and reminding us that we're part of something much bigger. It challenges us to see the person behind the history. We often think of history as these big events, you know, empires, battles, social movements. But the Frankfurt Man shows us that history is also about individual lives, individual choices and beliefs. He could have been a weaver, a soldier, a father. We'll never know for sure. But the inscription helps us see him as a real person, not just some nameless figure from the past. A person who lived and loved and believed, and who, in the end, left a mark that's lasted all this time. It's a humbling thought to realize that even ordinary lives can have a big impact, that the ripples of our actions can be felt throughout history. Definitely. And it makes you realize how important it is to preserve the past, to study it. It's not just about gathering information. It's about understanding ourselves, our place in the world, and those human qualities that connect us across time and cultures. Well put. And as we wrap up our deep dive today, I'd like to leave our listeners with something to think about. We've explored the Frankfurt man's story, his faith, the world he lived in. But what if we switch perspectives? Imagine yourself in his shoes, living in a time of massive religious and social upheaval. How would you deal with the challenges of belief, identity, and belonging? It's a challenging thought experiment, isn't it? It asks us to step outside our own time and place, to think about the choices and difficulties people faced back then. And maybe by doing that, we can better appreciate the complexity of faith, the strength of the human spirit, and how belief can shape our world. Exactly. The Frankfurt Silver Inscription, it gives us a glimpse into the past, but it also holds a mirror up to us, to the present. It asks us to think about our own beliefs and values, and the legacy we might leave behind. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the Frankfurt Silver Inscription. It's been a fascinating journey, and we hope it sparked your curiosity about the past and the power of human stories. Stay curious, deep divers. We'll see you next time.